what I'm trying to do is create a really sophisticated uh, layering of, of textures that kind of replicates what happens on the street when people put posters up and then they get ripped down and then someone else puts more up and then there's a tag and then it rains and it gets weathered and um, you know this really organic sort of decay process that I'm trying to replicate in my fine art that I think is part of the beauty of street art. All my, my own posters are very, very bold and controlled, and that was great to insert them in that chaotic street environment. The goal of Obey was to create something from nothing, create the biggest coup possible. People don't like to be told to obey, but they do it all the time. And so I thought, well, if they're confronted with this, maybe they'll kind of you know, snap out of their uh, their trance. What I stumbled onto really was this whole sociology of how people interpret images and everyone everyone's interpretation of an image is a reflection of their personality. The more I put out there, the more people are going to want to know and the more power it's going to gain from nothing. And I was fascinated by that idea. <laughs> This is my house. Oh. About to have a baby. Four days. She's getting a C-section. The baby's still right side up. It's uh, starting off rebellious. George and Wheezy, you know, like the Jeffersons. My house is uh, it's full of stuff that inspires me and reminds me of you know, where where things can go, the potential, and keeps always keeps me trying to to expand and keep things fresh. Always surround yourself with people that are better than you to keep you striving. This old newsprint stuff comes, comes out of that book right there. Amazing resource. I grew up in South Carolina and art there was drawing a bowl of fruit, a seascape. I didn't really look at stencil making or screen printing or any of that as art at all. It was after this drawing in 88 that I started to examine art and think other things are valid. Photography is valid, collage is valid, printmaking, because you can mix all these all these different influences and once you print it, it sort of synthesizes everything into a cohesive uh, product. There's a lot of leeway for experimentation. Punk rock and skateboarding helped inspire me to make a lot of the kind of art that I make now. Yeah, that's pretty nice. I sell the one-of-a-kind stencil pieces for $800 to $2,000, but I also sell a lot of the same images as $30 screen prints. If you're a high school student skateboarder, you'd rather have a t-shirt than a poster. You can have that. Money's falling from the sky, then you buy the $2,000 piece. It's looking like it's uh, about ready to, to go, so I think we can um, get out of the garage and get out on the street, do some postering. Ladder, extension poles, rope, backpack, everything you need. We are driving to a very nice billboard on Sunset in the Echo Park area. To go out and put work on the street and make a connection with the public, and then I feel like it's important to give people some inspiration that they aren't powerless, they can go out and do their own thing. I had to look at what the route was, and I knew the, the low billboard was gonna be easy, but then getting from there to the other one, I had to kind of dangle and, and leapfrog from like obstacle to obstacle in order to get up to the, to the second billboard. I mean, that's an awesome spot, and I think that stuff will run for a while. All right, let's go. I think the reason that I still like to do street art a lot, even though I don't have to as a springboard for my career because I'm somewhat established now. There's no committee, there's no red tape, there's no bureaucracy. It's really immediate freedom of speech. You can, you can succeed without being completely absorbed and corrupted by the system is, is very important. <laughs>